Thank you for coming out tonight and covering the team. Really, really appreciate you guys. Can't thank you enough for, for your um, passion for Cal basketball. I want to start with Monty Bowser, um, kind of an unheralded um, night in, in some ways a, a, as a team. But Monty Bowser came in and made a, a number of huge plays for this team. He's local. He went to Bishop O'Dowd. He's been trained by a phenomenal coach in Lou Ritchie. And Monty Bowser stepped in in, in a pressure situation, knocked down a three. Um, you know, you look at his stat line, and, and his stat line doesn't show everything that he did. Um, but, you know, you, you look at the, the three rebounds he had, those were key rebounds, uh, one for one from three. And so I just couldn't be prouder of Monty Bowser. And we talked about that in the locker room. Um, Jalen Cohn battled through adversity. You know, they did a, one of their whole schemes was to try to stop him and limit his shots. And he came back in the second half determined on a mission. He made some huge plays for us. Fardaz Amak, I, I can't say enough about Fardaz. The leadership, the expertise, the ability to get rebounds in key situations, knocking down free throws in the clutch, which is something he's been doing his entire career. And so I'm just really, really pr proud of our players. Um, Devin Askew had, had a key bucket where he drove the lane and he kind of spun it underneath the basket. And, and then, of course, Jalen Celestine. And just, uh, I think it was a career high for him tonight, but it's a reflection of his work ethic and, and his persistence in, in fighting through uh, kind of a freak injury. And he, he was fantastic. Mark, how do you think you guys played tonight? Um, I, I think, number one, I would say you have to give a lot of credit to St. Thomas. Um, St. Thomas is going to beat a lot of people this year because they can put five guys on the court that are all extremely proficient three-point shooters. They definitely got loose for open threes um, in the first half and even in the second half. We made two or three different adjustments, and they still found a way to, 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 to get open threes. By the time we made our fourth adjustment, our guys were more locked in. The communication was better, and, and we did a much better job limiting the open threes. Mark, 10, 15, 20 years from now, when you're entering middle age, <laughs> what do you think you'll remember most about this night? <clears throat> Honestly, I think I'll remember Monty Bowser. Um, I mean, so many guys played great, but Monty is just a, a guy who he's always going to work. He's always going to be positive. You know, he indicated to me that, that he will accept any role on this team, whether it's playing heavy minutes, whether it's being a guy that pushes guys in practice. But I think I'll remember Monty Bowser. Janet came alive when he had the ball in his hands yeah. versus playing off ball yeah. earlier on. Was that a conscious moment there, or do you think he was maybe a little more free with the ball in his hands? Yeah, we, we, we definitely put the ball in his hands. And, and he kind of took <clears throat> the reins of the game himself with his leadership. And, and he made some huge plays. Jalen Cohn is someone, you know, I've told him and I've told the team. I will live with you know, one or two, maybe even three bad shots from Jalen Cohn because he makes them, because he makes them. And, and his spark uh, kind of midway late in, in that second half was just something that we absolutely needed to win this game. He's one of our team captains, a along with Dawson, Devin Askew, and, and his leadership showed out. Can you give us an update on what's going on with uh, Deontay <laughs> Kennedy, who didn't play, and also uh, you lost Newell after the first half? Yeah. Keontae Kennedy has a minor um, upper extremity injury, and we expect him back shortly. He's been doing all the rehab, and, and, and he'll be back very shortly. This is not a long-term injury for Keontae Kennedy. Um, I, I don't have an exact timetable, but it's not going to be long. Okay? In terms of Grant Newell, um, I, I think he's still being looked at by some of our medical people. I'll, I'll have you know, more of an update, more of a clear picture um, here in the next day or two. Is there any update on Tyson? Yeah, the, the update on Tyson is, is the NCAA denied his waiver request um, almost two weeks ago, and, and Cal immediately, myself, administration, Jalen Tyson, Jalen's family, we immediately um, filed the appeal. And the appeal is being evaluated, and, and we hope for good news very soon. Yeah, did you get a sense at all how long that will take? My, my sense is that we will have an answer by the end of this week. Um, I, I can't predict anything. But my sense is we'll have an answer by the end of this week, by Friday at the latest. How does it feel to get the pressure of that first one off your head's chest? I was just really proud of our players. You know, when it's all said and done, you can install the schemes you want, you can rep through all the fundamental work you want, but players have to go out there and make plays. This is a player-led team, and our players um, showed out, and they, they played with great poise and great leadership, especially down the stretch. 
Take a look at your roster. Do you feel like what Jalen did today, uh, Celestine putting the team on his back with his 21 points is kind of emblematic of what could happen on any given night with a lot of different scorers on this roster? Yeah, no question. We, we have a lot. First of all, I can't, I can't say enough about uh, Jalen Celestine. I mean, when we first got here, Jalen wasn't quite at the point where he was, he was getting shots up, he was doing a lot of things, but <clears throat> he was still kind of getting over that last hump of the injury. And you guys can see it's, it's a full and complete recovery because of his hard work, because of great medical care, but because of Jalen Celestine's diligence. So I'm just incredibly proud of him. He's, <clears throat> he, he's someone who is a great teammate. You know, we have, we have some younger guys on the team. We have some freshmen, we have some walk-ons. And Jalen Celestine is like that big brother figure that just takes guys under his wing. So I, everyone was so happy for him. Mark, you talked about making hospitality and a destination point for basketball fans. There weren't a lot of people in the stands, but the people who were here seemed pretty enthusiastic. How would you rate the, the crowd, the atmosphere? I would say the atmosphere tonight was, was unbelievable. I mean, it, there were a lot of fans up there. I don't have the exact camp count, but there were a lot of fans. They were passionate. They were loud. Haas Pavilion is going to be filling up. It's going to be filling up. Um, you know, and so I'm really excited about the fan support. Uh, Coach, what did you think about the defense tonight, <clears throat> specifically Bardos, who you're reuniting with, and just the kind of versatility he allows you? Yeah. I, I probably should have, should have allowed Fardos to switch onto their point guard sooner in the game. I mean, he, he can do it. The NBA scouts know that he can do it. And, and you know, sometimes he, because he's such a great rebounder, that, that, that's the cost benefit. You know, sometimes you want Das closer to the rim because he just gobbles up rebounds, um, just like a machine. And so, but, but I probably should have uh, gone to allowing him to switch on point guards a little bit sooner because he's very good at it. Coach, you mentioned the freshman, Vladimir being one of them. How did you feel about his production tonight? Energy. He gave us a spark. He drove down the lane, made a bucket. He was getting deflections. Um, Vladimir's a guy who you, you can't measure the size of someone's heart. Vl Vlada has a huge heart, and he made a lot of his, his uh, he made a lot of people, his family, and, and his, his uh, just his friends back home, extremely proud tonight by the way he played. Last one or two here. John. First half, you were a lot of zone defense. The second half, you switched, I think, almost primarily to man-to-man. -man. Was that something specific uh, about the zone that you really wanted to yeah, I mean, we run a few different zones, <clears throat> and, and we ran a few different zones in the first half. We probably ran only one zone in the second half um, in, in certain special situations. Um, but St. Thomas did such a good job of swinging that ball around that, that, that we switched to the man, the switching one through five, and that, that was effective for us. Coach, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for coming out. I really appreciate it.